Let me give you another example. Um, this is really going to really hit our 6A teachers, so if you're not 6A, hang on, hang, hold on tight. <clears throat> Yesterday, we talked, or the day before, we talked about integer operations, and when we were subtracting negative numbers, does that bring like warm and fuzzies to anybody? Remember those? That was like fun, right? Maybe not so much. Remember lots of rules when you were doing operations with negative numbers, and you had to remember what to do? And so we talked about, if we know that subtraction is all about the distance or difference, you can actually just put those numbers on a number line. Could y'all tell me where negative five is on a number line? Sure you could. You could put that on a number line. Could you tell me how uh, how far did I go? I'm having someone in the back tell me something. I don't know what. <clears throat> if the uh, if, if you could put negative five on a number line and you could put negative four on a number line, then you could you tell me how far apart those are? Negative five and negative four on a number line. How far apart are those? They're just one away, and you could do subtraction of integers like that. You could say, how far apart are they? But remember, 6A teachers, we also had to consider direction. Well, in calculus, one of the things that we do, uh, one of the things we do, look over there, is we find the area underneath the curve. That's kind of cool. Third grade teachers, you guys find area a lot, right? Well, now we're not going to find area of easy rectangles. We're going to find area under crazy curves. And so to find the area under that curve, we're going to give it this formula. Ignore that formula for a minute, because I know that looks like the crazy professor with the hair sticking out on the board. But if that is the formula, if that is, then that negative sign right there says you have to consider direction. If we are down below the axis, see how there, here's the axis, and so we're finding the area above the curve? If we go into negative land, if we're down there below the axis, then the formula, this formula right here, is exactly the same, except we have to consider direction. Remember when we did that with integers, six to eight teachers? All of a sudden, if we were subtracting from this number, subtracting something bigger than it, then the answer was negative. Same kind of thing applies in calculus, and now calculus makes a little bit more sense. I know those of you that didn't go through that didn't, didn't get as much, but you'll get a punch from this one. Do you remember the distance formula? Well, if you can think about the Pythagorean theorem for just a second. So if I wanted to find out how far apart this point was from that point, how far apart are those guys? Ooh, doesn't that feel like distance already? We just talked about how we can think about the distance between values as subtraction. Guess what those subtraction signs mean in, in, the, in that formula? Do those mean remove? No, they mean distance or difference, because that's what we're finding, is we're finding the distance between that point. So literally, if I can find this distance, and that distance, represented by these guys, then I can do a squared plus b squared equals c squared, and then to find that guy, I've got to take the square root. It doesn't have to be procedural, it can be understandable. I can actually tell the kids can develop this formula, because if they understand that subtraction, can mean the difference or distance between points. Here's a, another example, just really briefly. I know this looks a lot like, whoa, that's a little busy, but it's just the grown-up slope formula. It's just a calculus way of talking about the rate of change that's changing. And so I take a look at the slope of that line, and then I find the limit of it, but notice that this, these two subtraction signs right there have nothing to do with removal and have everything to do with the distance or difference between those points. One more example, if I was finding the area underneath this curve, hey, you're, you're, this looks familiar, right? I can find the area of all these rectangles, and then if I use calculus to make those rectangles smaller, 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 so I stuff them in there, I pack them all in there, and then pretty much they, they match the curve, that's kind of the, the idea of finding the area of that curve. We approximate it by finding all those areas of all those rectangles, and we make them smaller and smaller. Well, to do that, if I do that, then wouldn't I have to find the area of this rectangle? I would take the height times the width, right? Well, that's exactly what I've got right here. I've got the height times the width of all those little rectangles, and then I use calculus to add them all up. But what if instead of finding the area under that curve, what if I wanted the area between two curves? Here's one curve, and I want the area between these two curves. Well, if I want the area between those two curves, then I need the area of that rectangle there. What is the height of this rectangle? How would I find the distance, the difference between this function and that function? Look at that. There it is. There's the difference. This formula down here says find the difference or distance between those functions, and then multiply by the width and use calculus to add them all up, and you've got the area underneath that curve. It has nothing to do with removal. I remember the day. When I said, how do you remove a function from a function? Take away a function from a function? I was barely learning what a function was. You're not, you're not removing a function, you're finding out how far apart they are as those functions change. So the distance or difference definition, this applies to everybody, K2. What I want to do is I want to give you ammunition. When your principal goes, yeah, I know that's not fuzzy math that you had time, but I really need you to do your teaks. You're going to go, holy cow, my teaks lead to calculus. And let me tell you, we saw this presentation, and what we're doing, what we learned, leads to better understanding of calculus. And I saw it. I saw examples, now I'm only doing subtraction today, we could do all the operations, but I don't have time. You're seeing examples of, if we really understand subtraction, 
that it applies to higher math. This is not a bunch of me coming in as an elementary expert and saying, hey, we could really think about numbers better. This is me as a mathematics expert saying, we can really understand higher mathematics if we build the basis better in the basis, in, in, in the lower levels as we go up. A uh, really quick example, uh, we can also find the volume of a thing. Check out this solid curve right here. See that solid guy right there? Ignore all the rest of this. Solid guy right there. Look at me for just a second. If I had that solid guy right here and I went like this, really, really fast, could you see how that would sort of fill in? And I would kind of see a blurry thing and it would create this sort of solid here. What if I wanted to find the volume of that solid? Well, to find the volume of that solid, I could find the volume of this little disc right here and then kind of like we did with the rectangles, I could have lots of it. I could fill it with lots of those little discs and then I could find the volume of that guy. Well, in order to find the volume of this cylinder, this little disc here, I need to have that radius. And I'm sorry, that's not showing up too, too much. But because the area at the base of that cylinder is a circle, I could find the area of a circle. You know what? You're going to memorize this one. That's pi r squared. Now, I could give you some mnemonics and stuff to help you. I could show you how to develop it and everything, but pi r squared is pretty much how you're going to do that. So I need the r. I need the radius. Hang on. I'm about to do something everybody's more interested in. Hold on. i got to have that radius to find the area of that circle, to find the volume of that little disc, to add up all those little discs, to have the volume of that crazy cylinder or that crazy shape there. So if I have that, the, the radius here, what happens if I still have that same dark curve? See, dark curve, same dark curve. But this time when I rotate it, I don't rotate it about the x-axis. This time when I rotate it, I go, I'd like to rotate it about that line. I still need that little radius here. How do I find the distance between this line and the outside of that circle? How do I find the distance between anything? Guess what? That's what that subtraction sign means right there. That subtraction sign in this nasty yucky formula means, look, 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 here it is, pi. There's the radius, squared, times all the little guys that I've added up so they get the whole, the whole formula. So I'm showing you some calculus formulas that I could have actually understood rather than memorized, but I had only the meaning of removal. I didn't have the meaning of distance or distance with subtraction as well. Um, I'm not going to take time on this one, but there's another fine example. And just really quickly, anybody remember delta epsilon proofs? Maybe not, but I'll just tell you, this is the bane. This is the bane of existence of everyone who ever took, we our, uh, your, your fearless leader is a calculus teacher, right? He remembers still, it's absolutely proof, I promise. There he is in the back with the thumbs up. Uh, I just want to show you that in this nastiness all over here, guess what those subtraction signs mean? They mean the distance from this L, and I, and I go both directions, this far up and that far up, so I get an interval, which is why I have absolute value over here. And it, so it's this interval here and this interval here, and it's all represented by subtraction as distance. Okay, that was enough of that. But what I wanted to, sh to again, was to back up. When people say to you, yeah, yeah, you're doing that one, or whatever, an elementary teacher, or middle school teacher, or whatever, you're like, oh, no, 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 no. I am building success in calculus right now. I am building success in higher math because I know that math is figure outable, and I'm teaching my students ways that will transfer to higher math, and I can give you an example. Maybe you can pull one of those up.